welcome Chris Lee from Asylum. Uh, thanks for coming today, showing up uh, to share with us your journey and how you got here. Okay, I'll try my best. <laughs> so, shall we start? Yeah. Okay. So the first question is, this is under the capsule of how we got here. So perhaps you can start off to give us a bit of a snapshot into how Asylum got started and how it, have, it has progressed to today. Okay, and this segment we have one hour. No, yes. we have five minutes. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, yeah. I'm a bit old, so I need to trace my memory a little bit to see uh, what happened when I was younger. Um, so I'll just rewind all the way back to the day when I went to Nian Poly when I was studying electronic engineering. Because any time before that, I was just a kid that liked to play around and fool around. I have no idea what I want to do in my life. Um, so yeah, so I went to engineering and that's the first time when I realized I really hated that whole thing about you know doing uh, computing, doing science, doing uh, coding and all that stuff. Uh, so I know I didn't want to do that. So after two years, I quit. And when I told my dad I wanted to quit, and he was very supportive, uh, and he said like, "Well, then what do you want to do?" And I still had, I didn't have any idea what I wanted to do. So I went to the army uh, with that. And then in the army, I kind of found my way. And I knew while well, in the army, I knew what I wanted to do for that two years. And I, when I came out, I was a lot more focused. And then I kind of set myself into three different things that I could do in my life. One was hotel management. I thought I love to travel, I could you know, manage hotel, it would be an awesome job. Uh, then I was marine biology because I always kind of like looking at underwater and I thought, my mother killed that very quickly. I was like, ah, please do, don't waste your time. What is that, right? And then you, she would never get to see me ever again. So that was out of the picture. And lastly, it was really this music thing. I was always interested as a teenager and there was this label called 4AD and I've been following them since I was a teenager and looking at record covers. I said, if I could design record cover the rest of my life, it would be awesome. So. So then I got into TP, uh, enrolled in the School of Design TP, and then I got out, and then I, um, what happened was I started working first for Beatty uh, for three months because they put me uh, to design uh, OUB Bank, and I thought it was killing me. So I quit shortly, I would join Greenhouse, and then I went to Ogilvy. So I uh, Greenhouse for a year, and then Ogilvy. And finally, uh, I was interviewed as art director, so I got a job as art director. But the day I started, they were told me they were forming a design department and they look at my portfolio and say, oh, you know, your portfolio is more suitable for design than advertising. So would you want to head up the design department? So next thing I knew, I was the head of design in the <laughs> newly formed Ogilvy design. Uh, and I did that for two years. Uh, and then BBH started in Singapore and then they also uh, saw me and then they said, like, so I jumped over to BBH uh, for two years. And then at the end of the day, I said, I think I've seen uh, the scene and I know what I can do within the context of you know commercial design and that's why I said okay maybe I should start my own company. So if we were to fast forward to today from how you started Asylum to what it is today, what do you think has changed quite significantly for you? Personally or the company? Company. Uh, company I think has changed uh, from where we started to what we are today is just a natural progression of small changes that became a big change. So like this, it is now this way because we had a lot of small changes. It wasn't a planned kind of step to do this. We just want, knew that we wanted to be multidisciplinary in the beginning because it was a cool thing to say in the 90s without really knowing what it is. But then as we started working on like restaurant and retail, I just felt that if you do a project like a retail or restaurant, uh, the brand is a part of it, but the space is a bigger component uh, of the experience. And that's how when I said, okay, we really need to be you know a lot more holistic in what we do. And that's how we kind of slowly toy. We hired one interior, for a while it worked, it didn't work, and then suddenly we found a project, you know, it's trial and error. I think all oh, trial and error. A growing pains basically. Mm, trial and error. I think with just the fact that we we kind of knew where we want to get to, but you needed opportunity, you needed the kind of right people to join you, and sometimes if you force it high enough, it will happen, I guess, you know. Mm. I think, yeah. How did you balance getting, say, interior related? interior design related project versus finding the right team who can execute it. Because if you hire too early, then you end up with the overhead, right? Yeah. If you hire too late, then you end up not being able to deliver a good project. 
Yeah, I think we never hire too early. Mm. We, it's always a response to, <laughs> shit, we took on a project like this. How are we gonna, ever going to solve it? I think that's always the case. I mean, the first kind of big interior project we took was in Shanghai, where we won a, a Sony gallery. And we have no idea how to execute it. Thank God the client had an American architectural firm, and we were part of Duffy then. And so they were heading the space and we were doing helping them with ideas and then we kind of learned from there oh what you know is what is the whole thing all about before that you know we have no idea how to do that so we learned as we were kind of you know in murky waters and kind of trying to find our way and then from there then we oh okay to do a project like this, you need to have xyz one project manager <laughs> then we started to look for people and then when we found uh, another client who i think then was a, a bookstore in jakarta and then, or even then, no, even then we were working with uh, external interior designers. There was a company that we worked with, we collaborated. Mm. So the first maybe three, four projects, we were just learning. Mm. So I would kind of be the middle person. Mm. And of course, then we would tell the interior, let's, you know, this is the vision, we work together and then we learn. Mm. And then through there, then we kind of, yeah, manage, slowly manage to find our own people and, and yeah. During this journey, is there any few highlights that uh, things didn't go as planned and how you managed to resolve it and how you were able to learn from the process. Any few examples? Uh, yeah, I think every project is challenging for us. <laughs> I think from the day we just started to work, move from graphic to interior, obviously in the beginning our ways were very set in how we deal with graphic design issues. Uh, and then as we go into interior, you realize there's so many other issues. And sometimes we would take it on without really understanding the implications of what. Like for example, the, the project that we did in uh, Johnny Walker, in uh, uh, Shanghai. Um, no, even before that. So the Sony Gallery in Shanghai was the most challenging because we had no idea about how to work in Shanghai and we have no idea of the market. We have no idea of doing interior. Mm -hmm. and as we were building the project, we realized that all the problems that they're waiting to be solved there, we were not dealing with it enough. The client was getting very upset. Uh, and then I had to ask my project manager, can you please move up to Shanghai for two months mm. for the company? Mm. <laughs> and she packed her bag and she moved up there for two months. So that even there are a lot of issues that she can't solve, but she so we became a better integrated unit. Mm. So that was the first time we learned how to work in a country outside of Singapore. Uh, and, the, and the end result was good. The client was happy, but it was, there were a few months of like, wow, we were getting hammered by the client every other day like you know deal with this deal with that and we were just yeah when you're not there somehow the issue is not that immediate you know when you have somebody there every day they'll call me chris you need to get me this you need to get me that you know, every day we're fighting fire <laughs> so yeah that's one of those things that we kind of it's easy to think we can but actually when you go down to the actual building of the space the site there's a lot of issues Mm -hmm. Always a lot of issues. Especially now, right, given the current situation whereby travel is limited, I'm sure you have several interior design projects ongoing and you're now yeah. in remote. Yeah. yeah. I can see it a little bit. We have been doing a few Zoom walkthroughs, oh, wow. uh, like mock-up rooms and all that. And they've, uh, I think, to mostly quite difficult and uh, very hard to ascertain whether is it the real thing, the right material, color, because it's all zooming. Um, so it's been challenging. Uh, we've opened a hotel in Seoul uh, this August for Mondrian Hotel. So it was designed before COVID. When it was building, we were supposed to do like maybe six checks uh, in between, but none of it which we, we could go. So each time they just took pictures, sent to us. Uh, but I think the only consolation was that in this project, the client is the, is the, is the builder, the other contractor. So they are very capable and when they have the will to build something, it gets done. Mm. If it's a third party contractor, you have, you'll be in a different nightmare altogether. Mm. So we finished the project uh, and then they opened through a big party. We weren't there, uh, we just saw pictures. Uh, so I'm still wating to step foot into the hotel and go like, oh, sh you know, is this really nice or not? But if this is the new normal, I think it will be tough lah, for built environments. I think it's very, very tough. Mm. So what about like uh, the relationship wise, like how do you, because obviously for project in the built environment, mm. uh, the trust and 
comfort is super important, right? The relationship between the, the studio and the client. Yeah. How do you how do you maintain and keep that sort of healthy and humming? Mm, actually, uh, uh, for a lot of our projects, uh, the relationship is between the, the project managers and our project with the team. Uh, because between the bosses, they're not really, I mean, yeah, you know, we do a handshake, but it's not really like a relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the project managers work each other on a daily basis. So as long as they are comfortable and if you've done one project, you get a trust, then it shouldn't be an issue. Mm-hmm. It's kind of finding your feet in the first place, you know. Uh, but I think, and a lot of uh, hospitality projects, once you get to know the group, it's the same people you work with, mm-hmm. which is a good thing. You just you have that trust immediately. You know what I do, what I say, what I mean something. So I think that's the good part. You don't really always have to find new clients. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are a couple that you can keep, you know, uh, building on the strong relationship and, and doing better work, I think. Mm. What's really interesting uh, and I'm very curious to learn from you is uh, what do you think are the three, two or three uh, reasons why Asylum is so successful? Uh, <laughs> their philosophy, it could be the way you do things, like, or there's a certain DNA that the, the studio has. Like, what, what do you think make it what it is today? I think in, I mean, in terms of People, the key thing is I have Pillar, you know, Kara, uh, been with me uh, for 25 years, and Michelle has been with me for 21 years. And these Pillars, they, they know the DNA, they've seen through everything. Uh, and so we have stability when it comes to everything management, decision. And then young blood, you know, designers will come in with new ideas. And that I feel is important that they come. They give us three years, four years, they move on, it's fine. And then, mm-hmm. So we keep the company fresh with ideas. At the same time, there are certain learnings that are important, especially now that we are doing uh, build projects. You really need a lot of uh, <laughs> knowledge mm-hmm. that you cannot just learn from anywhere. You got to be on the job. If you're a project manager for a, a hotel, mm-hmm. I cannot teach you, but you have to go through a few times then you know oh, okay what are the things that you really need to look out for right. uh, so I think in terms of people really the stability of the you know, the key people and Elaine is also now a partner so there are four of us and then uh, then we have like the, the the senior people and then with the junior designers that, that you know come and go what do you think is the like is there a philosophy that you operate in the studio like a way like ethos or some kind of value or how do you how do you run the studio effectively or efficiently? I think personally, I always feel is whatever we do is never good enough, lah. Whatever we do is never good enough. Yeah, like it can always like be better. Yeah, good is the enemy of great. Yeah, this is John Haggerty's line, right? Mm-hmm. Which I you know took, uh, and it's true. I feel that whatever we do is never good enough and each time you complete a project you feel that it could be better mm. and so therefore the next time you do it you learn and apply more and i always have this feeling that we i think there's a japanese term of this you know how you keep improving as a system it's, i can't remember the name now mm. but you just keep wanting to improve on what you do what you work on um, and that is my probably ethic, lah, work ethic that we have in the studio that is never good enough, which is also a problem. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also so curious, um, what's the next big thing for you? I think what's been keeping me busy for the last seven years was because you know uh, my kid. I mean, I'm a father, and suddenly I have a role to play as a role model at home, so I have to be at my best. <laughs> 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 I think, it's, I think it's really interesting to see uh, things through the eyes of a child and kind of see that and that actually informed me in, uh, in certain things that I've lost. Uh, as a kid, obviously I know how it's like, but now you look at how they do things like, oh, actually interesting, the problems that they face now, I would have faced the same thing, but they are, in, they are solving it in different ways. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, I learn uh, every day from that. What's your parenting style? Wow. Uh, I'm the I'm the bad call at home, mm. oh. so I'm the disciplinarian at home. Uh, but having said that, 
I think we have a really good relationship. I mean, I adore him and he knows I love him. Uh, sometimes we do the boy thing, we play sumo at home, we watch sumo wrestling, and then we, we mimic sumo at home, you know, and do all sorts of funny, funny things. But the, uh, he knows that when the line is there, the line is there. Mm. And he knows what lines he doesn't push. I mean, he's not as rebellious as I was when I was a kid, so that is half the problem solved. Uh. Mm. Uh, so I don't have to be too, um, uh, too into it. Uh, he's actually quite a good kid. Uh. Mm. So if you were to have a book, an autobiography, what do you think your title would be? My life as a disco ball, I think it would be quite good. Mm. Disco ball. Mm. Yeah, the music changes, but you still dance. I love that. <laughs> I love that. I think, uh, yeah, it is what it is where we survive. And then uh, you're there and you're just doing your job. Um, mm. And I do, I do think that, I think as a designer, uh, growing up in Singapore, I've kind of seen a lot of things uh, that are interesting and done a lot of things that are borderline, but no, I wouldn't say that, but interesting, I would say, yeah. yeah. Exploratory. <laughs> uh, yeah, exploratory, yes, yes, yes. And I think, yeah, I think it's a great way to live a life. Mm. Whether successful or not is one thing, but I think to be able to see the things we see, and understand human nature based on what we do is quite interesting. Yeah. So what 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 keeps you, you know, uh, kind of interested in coming to work? Mm. Good question. Because I ask myself every day. I mean, like I, I mean. And every different part of my life, I would have an answer. And if I can't find the answer, then I better dig harder. <laughs> mm. I think for me, sometimes there is a um, very, very interesting project that we know and the client allows us to help them shape and make a difference. Mm. So for that, I, I feel very excited to come to work. I feel energized to work with the team. Mm. He knows that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's for me. Um, yeah. And then as a whole, I feel like with those projects that we've done, it would also um, motivate the team as well. Mm. Personally for them as well, growth for mm. them. Because mm. we learn, like you, you said, we learn so much from every single project. And every project that came, came through our door, they are always from different industry, different genres, right? Mm. So I'm always, I'm a keen learner, I love to learn about new things. So that also excites me. So I think with great client who allows us to do that, it, that, that motivates me mm. on a day-to-day -day basis. I think, yeah, I've, I feel like as a studio progresses with time, what my interest might differentiate from the younger designers who join us. Mm -hmm. Especially if they've seen what you've done in the past, they go like, oh, I'm joining us because we do this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But then us, yeah. we already done, yeah. yeah, we don't want to do that anymore, but yeah. they join for that. So therefore, I have this dilemma sometimes yeah. of the things that I'm interested and how do you still get them excited? So yeah. sometimes I find projects to just give to them yeah. so they can be happy, but then I have to find my own source of inspiration. Yeah. yeah. Because after yeah. some time, it's like, okay, you don't want to be doing another this, another that, yeah. or doing this. And you want to just change. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. And I find when we're young, it's easy. Everybody has the same vision, right? Yeah. We all want to do cool shit. That's yeah, all we want to care about. And then, and then as you grow older and older, like, okay, yeah, I find a little bit of that. I, I also feel that. Um, Actually, at our studio currently, we are very fortunate. We have very uh, amazing people, amazingly mm. talented, and super easy to work with. Uh, from my side, I feel that there's one thing I want to do is to uh, codify the system and process it better. Mm. Uh, and and to your point about getting the right mix of project, I, I also feel that and correct me if I'm wrong that you are in a good place. That, that the projects where you 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 have a reasonable selection that you can decide um, and then what keeps us uh, excited is to show like yeah, let's say you you have no idea who's gonna walk through that door mm. right yeah 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 and during the circuit breaker period it was actually very encouraging because we have a um, conversation with a uh, Singaporean uh, they're all doing very um, enterprising stuff it is amazing like I'm mm. quite uh, inspired by the Singapore resident like what they're doing, like lots of them are doing very, very interesting things. And mm -hmm. then I think that's one of the reasons why our industry stays very vibrant. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I think sometimes you get interesting entrepreneurs that 
wants to change the world. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, wow, okay, yeah. there's something that is interesting that you work on it. Yeah. It energizes us, la, I think, in a way. Yeah. I think some learnings along the way. Yeah. I think one thing that also came to me is that everybody will go through the same path. It's kind of like running, right? The first few 10 minutes, you'll be like, oh, sluggish. Everybody goes through that and yeah. you find your zone and towards the end of it, yeah. you, you, you know, you have to go through that determination. Do you want to push a bit harder? Or yeah. Not? I always feel if you run too fast from the beginning, you run out of steam very quickly, mm-hmm. right? You need to pace yourself and then in the end you have, but it's just that when we are younger, we have studios, we don't think about pacing. Like, we, just, we just do, right? Oh, Whatever yeah. we can, yeah, we can do, we just do. Yeah. And then now you look back and say, oh, okay, you know. I think, thank God we didn't burn out though. I mean, there are a lot of people who probably get burnt out yeah. when they, when they are, you know, you see them in the scene and then after that, they just disappear. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. I think the, well, yeah. but both of you, you all can spur each other on, right? I mean, if you are yes. feeling down, you do that, right? it's actually, I think, I think having a partner uh, in what you do yeah. is something I never had. Mm. I mean, like from day one, whatever we do is always, of course, I, I have partners now, but it's not like from day one where we sat down and say, let's do this and do that. Yeah. And are you moving the agency like specifically to a direction or... or um, I guess currently we're also still sorting out some of the internal, like you say, trying to codify some of our processes. Because mm. uh, I think over the past few years, we've, we've gone through different interesting yeah. Yeah, transition journeys, and, and it's very interesting. But how do we, like, finally? I think this year is a good time where we can sort of uh, slow down a bit and I think. Mm. What exactly? Because I, I, I think over the past few years, like wow, everything is like every day is like so busy. Yeah. But now yeah. I think it's a good time to say, mm. to think what exactly is the next, like you said, next five years for mm. us. Yeah. Um, mm. Are we still doing this, or are we gonna? In, 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 evolve. evolve or, yeah. And are there projects that you're not doing currently that you would love to get into it and do? <laughs> a lot of projects. <laughs> I, I guess that isn't like specific, but what curatorial, I personally, yeah, curatorial role, you know, because you guys are very connected. You can you all do a lot of projects that are that involve the community, and you have yeah. this. It's like a light, right, for people to look at, yeah. and whether there's something that you have you can harness within there that you have this network of people, I don't know, I feel that there is something there. Mm-hmm. That, that not, I would say many agents can do good work, right? But for somebody to to have their aura, that does thing that the community can look up to. So far, I think there's something mm-hmm. that you guys have that's unique. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know, but I think maybe there was something you might have mentioned it before. Um, I feel like there isn't a, a museum that is dedicated to design mm-hmm. in Singapore. So mm-hmm. I've also talked to you about it mm. years ago, but we didn't, we never had a chance to really like look into it. Mm. And after uh, many uh, several sort of uh, working sessions with other museums, I felt like that could be a, something that I would I would like to work on mm. sometime mm. in this lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's just not me. Maybe it's like together, together with other designers. Yeah. So I don't think it's a single person. You need to find a, first. We need to find a patron. Uh. Exactly. That's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> who, who has the heart in the right direction. Yeah. 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 It's a it's a commitment. Because yeah. you see a lot of the most interesting museums are always privately owned mm-hmm. with a patron that mm-hmm. has got this love mm-hmm. and therefore don't look at, you know, other parameters, mm-hmm. just make it happen, right? Make it good. Yeah, mm-hmm. make it good. Yeah. So, so, yes, yeah. that is uh, something that uh, I, I, I do dream about. That would be awesome, yeah. I know yeah. to have a museum would be, it was one of those checklists that we had in the society. <laughs> and then we all like, ha ha ha. ha. <laughs> <laughs> It never happened, uh, you know. Uh, but I um, hope you get uh, a lot more big projects and hopefully you become the patron. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I need to build hotel first. Uh. <laughs> I need to be my own client, build my own hotel, then build I can like, open. 500 out there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, give awesome. the whole first floor to design museum. Yes, oh, yes, uh, thank you. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe we can build a whole village of uh, like, museum, hotels, 
thing. Yeah. Oh, like what they do in Kyoto now, no? The, yeah. the hotels are all sporadic. Yeah, it's yeah. not one block, but it's yeah. different houses. Yeah. Within, and this neighborhood is quite cool, right? Yeah. You have all these uh, interesting things in our neighborhood. You can yeah. Have it. And each of the unit is completely different in style. And Maybe after COVID, there'll be a lot of empty lots. We can just Actually, tell yeah. the owners and say, meanwhile, they're empty, give yeah. it to us. We curate content in there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Mm. I think that would be fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much okay. for sharing. No, pleasure, you pleasure. So much today. Yeah. Pleasure, yes, pleasure. No, yes. no, no, no. Pleasure. Always good to chat. Next time we drink wine, we can talk more. Yes, yes for yes, sure. Yes. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, thanks. Yes. Okay.